Advantage one is backlash. American military presence in the Middle East is increasing. It's secret and rapid nature risk conflict with Iran. That's Kibblestein, 1116. U.S. military deployed thousands of troops since October 7th. Refuses to disclose bases or deployment. Salty welcomed F-15 following attacks on troops. Growing presence, rising tensions with Iran, driving conflict. Salty central to tensions. U.S. spirals to regional war with Iran. Tip for tat, hard to predict. Deployments not only fail to deter Iranian attacks, but they might invite enlargement. They might invite them. Enlargement of presence increase conflict, more points of contact, presence less deterrent than target to strike, undisclosed location, secrecy linked to Israeli war, presence in salty, expanding upgrade, turn in permanent, and presence since, sent, sent, sent since October 7th triggers Iran and proxy escalation. And that's Kavanger and Rehi, 1124, aftermath of October 7th, prompted anti-Americanism attacks by Iran, consequences for regional stability, ability to deter adversary stakes, evident in flow of carriers, aircraft, troops, and air defense to, uh, and air defense to Iraq partners, expanding presence, aggravate tensions, raise miscalc approach, costly dollars, lives, war, insurgency, and econ ruin, response, rapid and extensive carriers, nukes, sub, aircraft, troops, weapon systems, swift and decisive, response, stands out, given, deliberative decision making, prompted consideration in, co in Congress, the three risks Biden must address, escalation, backlash, and overstretch deployments in seven trigger escalatory spiral attacks by Iran, mounted by the U.S. augmented presence and launch strikes, neither forces nor strikes deter adversaries, attacks become brazen, neither dire escalation, this could change, increased presence, raises miscalc provocation, gives rationale to build up and escalate, renewed posture, retreat, deployments, underwrite security, decades of involvement, exacerbated rivalries, arms races, worsened conflict, global reputation, undermined regional instability, and that guarantees regional instability, American backing uniquely leads to American uh, uh, Middle East escalation, that's Lambert 1016, Israel, Lebanon, heating up Hezbollah, carrying out attacks, fear of conflict engulfing the region, Hezbollah remained coined, Contribute to confrontation. Initial reaction was to attack. Hardliners feel feel time to blow. Hezbollah with deployment of U.S. carrier group. Hezbollah larger and capable. Plan for next war. Underground expansion. A mass arsenal of rockets. Mount blockade challenge. Air superiority. Hamas led compared to Hezbollah. War turned regional attacks across region and Syria, Iraq, and Iran. Defeating Hezbollah cannot be achieved. Key component of Iran's deterrence. If Iran instructed Hezbollah to open a front or would it comply, attacks intensify situations. Critical, most serious conflict war arise from miscal as lows escalate and Middle Eastern war escalates. Thus, Adensky 1021, October 7th triggers global war and conflict in Gulf's region and war provoking destructive escalation. U.S. forces attacked oil, trade, halt hundreds of missiles on Tel Aviv, compelling America to enter the fray. America deployed nuclear carriers to Mediterranean. If Lebanese army enter Israel, stretch thin, Car carriers welcome, war spread, uh, carriers welcome, uh, war spread, Iran striking Israel, four million uh, Israelis, Israel sent warplanes to Iran, difficult to strike, missile scenario drop in U.S. Biden shut in exports, oil suffering, financial lifelines, Iran involved proxies, join fight, to run, raise legions, Assad deploy camp weapons, or give to Iran troops, attack beginning, militias create create chaos, should Israel escalate, ramp up strikes, overthrow Iraqi government, oil facilities, attractive targets, war spread to Gulf, 20 million barrels via Gulf, Tehran blocks all traffic, creating pressure on importing nations, and Iran escalation causes extinction, deterrence invites conflict, that's Farley in 2022, World War III Three erupts Iran coercion, failed Iran stepped up nuke efforts, improving sophistication of missile forces, increasing activities, U.S. allies in Riyadh and Jerusalem triggers confrontation. If Iraq believes attacks inevitable, preempt with tools, conflict in the Middle East, open opportunities for Russia and China. Thus, the plan, the United States ought to substantially reduce its military presence in the Levant and Persian Gulf regions. Only a substantial reduction of new troops enables regional stability, prevents terrorism, uh, improves overseas perceptions, and prevents overstruck by shifting to the Indo-Pacific. That's Cabrera in Murky, 1124. Mid-East policy need correction. Washington should withdraw forces and rush back, substantially downsizing military presence in the region. Rupture offers a sustainable and largish approach. Chance this high U.S. drive into a regional conflict needs to reduce and realign its presence, keeping troops and requires continued development and deployment and advanced systems training resources. Training resources with little benefit. U.S. can draw down presence gradually without fear of abandonment. Forces sent since October 7th should be redeployed, freed, then deter escalation by Iran and proxies. Iran not war and presence. Smaller forces combined with surge forces sufficient to change change a shift from security model to balanced approach, less risk escalation or overstretch, and allows the regional powers to lead, protect, flex, you know, protect, uh, lead uh, to, to, uh, to security model, uh, to lead, protect, flex, reduce war, and preserve capacity for other priorities. Thus, the standard is minimizing the risk of human extinction, which is our framework. It outweighs death is global, painful, irreversible, and a floor for a value. Moral uncertainty means that the risk we're right outweighs the risk that we're wrong. No amount of 
suffering, justified universal, non-consensual death, and anticipation breeds empathy and entangled care, distancing ourselves from considering extinction, reinforces attached elitism that's offered 17, existential uh, challenge we uh, chose to live with, the question whether we have capacity to end this logic, responding is imperative, sense of care, informed by pacifist and decolonial approaches, unsettled violence, reconceptualized human co uh, community to see how we learn to co-survive, struggle, produce incentive to intellectual exchange, to release new ethical energies of survival, recognizing entanglement requires a shift in focus of literation, kind of fear, abstract, not our business, this is a moral tyranny of distance, and scenario planning catalyzes broader action in social relations and highlights systematic flaws in politics that's commonly in 13, the role of experimentation can disrupt authority, habit, habit institutional regularity, and the set stage for larger scale actions, activities probably need to experience once you enter your professional life. You may rethink connections of prison systems and adjust your practice. Voting seems radically, in, radically insufficient. Minor role experiments generate energy perceptions become refined, forge connections to larger constituencies. Periodically critical movements emerge, around spring new left feminist and gay rights movements. Cut at feminist and gay rights movements. Uh, the Connolly evidence. Yeah. Where's that? Uh, no, I can't yeah. Like Didn't read the last two cards. Yeah. Uh, does anyone need a dog for it? No. Okay. If not, then I'm ready for cross -ex. that because the US military is becoming more secretive and refusing to disclose yeah. locations like where troops are. But I guess are. kind of like the escalation of war, how does that necessarily cause extinction, right? Because uh, yeah. for example, wars occur all the time, but they haven't caused extinction. Like what independently makes this like cause extinction? Sure. Uh, so the affirmative has read a ton of evidence for why post-October 7th, when the attack of Hamas on Israel occurred, that has caused the US presence to become increasingly dangerous. Wars not happening in the past do not account for October 7th being an absolutely detrimental and huge day in society. Yeah, um, all of our evidence in extinction though. Yeah, all of our evidence is in the context that if a Middle Eastern war were to happen, it would be a potential World War III that would cause other countries to, uh, to be drawn in. For example, World War III could erupt in Iran. Okay, that's fine. In Europe, and I guess kind of like on your thinking, like what does it mean to like minimize the risk of human extinction? Yeah, it means exactly what it sounds like. The framework says that death is the ultimately worst impact that could ha ever happen because it is irreversible, like, causes an insurmountable yeah. suffering. The affirmative, like the point of the framework is like, to prevent yeah. death. Uh, well, we've just read a framework that is minimizing the risk of extinction. Yeah, we've said so that death is bad. Yeah, we said that death is bad. Cool, awesome. And then it's kind of like, how do we, I guess, kind of like position ourselves in instances where there is violence occurring like within this world? Like, why should we kind of like dissuade these conversations or like ignore these problems in order to like fear monger over things such as extinction? Sure. Uh, the affirmative would say that, or if you're trying to make a critique over extinction as a concept, the affirmative would say that extinction is a prerequisite to accessing any offense that you may talk about. Obviously, things like violence and the status quo related to structural violence are bad, but the affirmative argument is that everything in this world like can get better. The ability to have a conversation. Uh, yeah, everything in the scope can get better. For example, progress can be made. For it's example, technology. Anything. You don't make those claims like in the one you see, so I'm kind of like wondering why you're making the pivot to progress being possible now. Well, my art, it's obviously predicated on whatever the one and see push is. The offered evidence indicates that specifically talking about extinction rhetoric is good because it motivates <coughs> people to have empathy for other people around, right? Like when we envision ourselves in the scenario where everyone yeah, is able okay. to die, so if there are like in other specifically countries, good. for example, if there are things like such as famine occurring where people are actively dying and like populations are on then like on populations themselves are on the brink of extinction, how come people like don't care about things like that yet they care about like nuclear war extinction. If, if a country is on the probability of dying from extinction because of a famine, then obviously our framework prioritizes that. Um, uh, this is the context of a debate round where we've said that one certain policy is good. Yeah, I cannot tell like you. Asking the ways in which your general framework like implicates going through or like I guess processing other problems, right? Yeah, for processing. example, like talking about nuclear war is not the only thing that is going to be like implicated under your framing. I'm asking on a like broader <coughs> level, like how we have to think yeah, we think the consequences based on whatever brings the most death or the biggest impact. Obviously, every impact in the context of what you are talking about matters, but our argument is that death or global extinction is the biggest impact, which can be weighed under our framework.
That's up to you. Uh, okay. Will you be like fine if I don't? I am fine, yeah. Okay. This is probably gonna be weird, but it'll be ordered like the first off, then taste proper, and then second off if I have time for it. Okay. Sorry, did you send it? I haven't got I it. just sent it. Okay.
repeat, but come on, 90DD, two recent save reversibility, one oppressive uh, rhetoric has been used to cannot be taken back, be norm setting, we are part of a larger debate community with extensive norm setting, bad discourse, run rape, and kills that, and on to the 10th point. There is no value to black feminism, negativity, and disgust is prescribing onto blackness through the birth of civil society. The world can only sustain itself through the manifestation of anti blackness. Thus, the K impact uh, turns their case impacts and their extinction impacts are terminally non unique. The world ended materially and ontologically for black people when the slave trade began with the New World of Law in 84. And a nuclear war, people killed is approximately the same number of African people who died as a result of slave trade for people of color. The world is over starvation, is already a problem. How is already inhumane? The world is not. And we knew it in the centuries ago. Our world language customs and ways into the death culture mandate. Yeah, this means that there's no longer, I guess, kind of like the 
cost of duty, or I guess, again, like I'm kind of like saying the like analogy of it being like the form of equation, right? We're saying that we remove ourselves from the equation, which is kind of like the difference, if that makes sense. Uh, what does it like mean to remove yourself from the Yeah, equation? so it means that we no longer engage within things such as civil society. We say that as long as civil society exists, it relies upon anti-black violence. Therefore, if we do not engage, then that means that there is no longer the ability for there to be the existence of the like, okay. structure of civil society. So you don't engage in the context of structured civil society, I guess. What we does say that things like the affirmative that like use politics, like political strategies, that kind of thing, leads to more anti-black violence. Therefore, we negate. Uh, like political strategies lead to more anti-black violence. Yeah. Your evidence indicates that the alternative would have things like ways of radical movements. Where or, or it says uh, often unacknowledged ways that radical movements. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I guess yeah. like, the alternative in itself is radical. So the alternative has these like political movements? No, it doesn't have political movements. If you actually read further into the evidence, it says like movements such as like abolition movement, things that pre like pre or present themselves as more political, okay. always feed back into civil society. We say this is bad because it relies on anti-black violence. Okay, got it. That makes sense. I'll start four minutes of prep time now.
advantage, military presence, primes, radicals, and Iran to escalate conflict that draws in every great power and causes oil shocks, which leads to escalation, which independently outweighs it either accumulates in a mass amount of deaths or human extinction, which the Dovodian Sea has not grappled with enough for them. All of their arguments about why nuclear war does not cause extinction are not in the context of post-October 7th, which assumes more escalation because the U.S. is deploying more secret troops, which is causing countries like Iran to want to escalate in the first place. Their defense is not contextual, so means you should err heavily affirmative. The Austin evidence on the case page does not have a single war. They just claim that these things uh, claim that a sort of conflict or sort of military presence needs to uh, stop escalation, but the plan proves that secrecy is uniquely causing escalation in the first place. And now we'll move on to the framework debate. At first, the offered evidence was basically conceded by the negative images of suffering, motivated action by allowing us to see what is going wrong and discover solutions. That's offered saying catastrophes are fake, is detached elitism that makes them inevitable in the first place. Specifically, discussing things like death rhetoric is something that is uniquely good in the, in the base space because it creates empathy and motivates real life activism. Think back to when the protesters protested about Iran, about the US federal government, and they went out and they, they made these protests and they created actual material change, which is the only thing that you're, uh, which is the only thing that debate brings as a competitive benefit. But that means you should air heavily affirmative because talking about these things is uniquely good and the state can be good in specific instances. Go to the critique proper. Weigh the 1AC versus the competitive opportunity cost, only weigh the consequences of the hypothetical implementation of the plan. Anything else is arbitrary, unresolutional, makes the 1AC which kills clash of fairness and outweighs fairness is necessary for every argument, otherwise you could hack against them. And predictability allows for in-depth testing, which makes the better advocates know the balance solvency, all causes uh, all causes overwhelm subjectivity like schools, religion, and family. But the family case outweighs extinction is global, painful, and the only irreversible impact. No amount of present suffering justifies non-consensual and universal death. No short solution. It is not a short solution. It is something that is permanent and permanently reduces troops in the Middle Eastern region, which stops escalation and pre prevents everyone from dying in the first place. From dying in the first place, this is not rhetoric that is like, oh hey, as long as we stop extinction, it is okay for suffering. This is rhetoric that extinction is the biggest impact, accumulates in a mass amount of death. But extinction is uniquely bad in the context of nuclear war because things like nuclear waste are thrown onto poor and minority communities because of the fact that the government, uh, because of the fact that people see them as lesser. But the affirmative is able to stop that and reverse these forms of racism in the first place. Permutation to both net benefit of contingent violence against blackness. The plan solve permutation to the alternative, perfect con justify uh, severance like what they read on the case page, uh, that proves they care about policy action, permutation to the app and the alternative. Their links are to the school because reforms already exist, which means that they can't solve their links. You know, limited intrinsic is key to testing the uh, community this is the key. The affirmative is a massive link turn and a no link. We reduce military presence in the Middle East, which is good, and they're totalizing descriptions of anti blackness as a monolith, means that they have to win all reforms are impossible. So any example of progress takes it out, example like the 13th, 14th, and 15th amendments and civil rights acts of 1871 and the 1960s. And 1968, and the Voting Rights Act of 1965 targeted discrimination, and all disprove the thesis of ontology and racial progress is statistically proven for pessimism and demobilizing and undermines, uh, undermines health as hostile. 17, there, there are grounds for objects and gap between life expectancy decline from 7 to uh, 3 uh, years. That is astonishing given slow pace of transformation. A lot of people are living longer, declining rates of homicide, HIV, infant mortality, cancer, disease, and suicide. A lot have the right to govern a life, uh, the, the life to rise, um, the exonerating individual through DNA and reforming a C, a CJS, enable people to be released, reduced, given to. 70% more business stunning pessimism that takes place to say to say mobilize after a culture is suggested often to associate with gender a uh, liquid cholesterol lower choice uh, for guys associated with healthy profile healthy behaviors and racial biases are valuable and shaped by institutional change no liberal economy and to our ontology warrants pain that's uh, 21 racism does not result from prejudice individuals but from structures uh, that uh, from, from structures that disadvantage a uh, group studies that uh, suggest implicit evaluation can be eliminated by lily participants or ranger but uh, changing can alter uh, can, uh, can alter to a value as well established um, biases less stable the more easily attracts is all a redirection of attention to solutions. There's a, a social phenomenon that has to present it, and then reading the side effort to reduce a bias focus on individual change in context more effective. Many of life institutions are biased policies, but the disadvantage of change of all the political parties changing the change bias and behavior policies that reduce inequalities are potent. Kind of potent. No, you're fine. I don't know. Y'all figure it out. Yeah. Maybe like I don't know. It's 
It's up to you. Maybe like 50 seconds or something. I had way more than 50 seconds. Oh, really? Yes. Like you took way more than 50 seconds? No, 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 no. Oh, you mean like only took 50 yeah. seconds? Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant like, like you, you have like three, like three ten. Okay, I'm fine with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I thought you meant like, I had 50 oh, seconds. Oh, no, no, no. You don't take like three minutes. Okay. <laughs> I need to send analytics.
was the end of the coherent world, which means that we reject the way in which society has been formulated and the social structures that come along with it, including hierarchies that are built upon it. And after this has been rejected, it triggers the quote unquote end of the coherent world, which is the turn against civil society, which uh, destroys the institutions. It's all explained to the evidence that the only possible answer in the face of unending anti black violence is to destroy civil society. We're also going to be extending the role of the ballot, which they called conceded, which is that rejecting anti blackness comes first, and ontology is the highest layer. It takes out
The affirmative was 100% conceded. Military presence primes radicals and Iran to escalate to conflict, which draws in every great power, causes all your shocks leading to escalation, which causes extinction and terminally outweighs all of their arguments. Even if they don't think that life is bad, it's unethical to make that decision for trillions upon trillions of possible future. And people in turns, all of the two owners' impacts by logical extinction is categorically distinct because it's irreversible. Pest is a social system that operates on a sliding scale within an ontological structure. There can always be improvements in material conditions and gratuitous violence is magnified in a nuclear war where people's faces are being melted off, diseases ravage cities, and a lack of access to basic resources are like food, water, and etc. The world can certainly get worse, and only the affirmative has a mechanism to stop that, and to stop that in the first place. The case page is just completely wrong. If you did not catch a single warrant for their arguments, and you should not vote negative, they just said something about reversibility and norm setting, but only the case is able to do that because extinction is categorically irreversible. Once someone dies, it is impossible to come back, and sort of a de deeming people, uh, deeming it okay to cause extinction is something that is of the perpetual logic of extinction, which is independently bad. Uh, go to the critique proper. The structure of the state is by no means perfect, but that it is but it is progressing. There is no reason why we should give up transformative change that genuinely helps black individuals, because the state immensely aids in these resistance strategies to the alternative advocates for. The two and has characterized blackness to be incremental and non-structure changing, but that is wrong. One is that these changes are not incremental. The Civil Rights Act allowed billions upon millions of black people to gain access to education, jobs, and housing, which has permanently changed their lives. Second is that even if they were incremental, it's not good that they have no evidence of these things that hinder resistance strategies, history shows that the Civil Rights Act, like the past, inspired future movements like BLM and the fight against police brutality, which justifies the futurist method of the affirmative advocacy. Now, we do not necessarily have to win that ontology is wrong, but a risk of it being wrong means that you should affirm to prevent human extinction from happening in the first place. Every piece of evidence was conceded by the negative. All they said is that the evidence was bad. What is the war for this? Progress is possible, and pessimism is actively demobilizing. Statistics prove the gap between black and white people's life expectancy has declined from 7 to 3.4 to years and unprecedented rate of demographic transformation. That's declining rates of homicide, HIV mortality, infant mortality, cancer, heart disease, and suicide, which is all because genetics have allowed an observation of wrongful conflicts through DNA testing, reducing conflicts by 17%. Their analysis of pessimism is absolutely actively harmful by taking away the incentive to stay mobilized. And to do, if you have any doubt about ontology, any percent chance that ontology is wrong, means that you should vote affirmative because they're sacrificing a mass amount of people for an academic theory. Uh, it explains that the Hochschild evidence explains long-term trajectory of gains and losses. It says that in areas of incarceration and health progression is huge and as every area with disparities are narrowing rapidly and have been closed, have even been closed, even if there's some risk that ontology is true, conceded that all of the empirical analysis, the 13th, 14th, 15th Amendment, all of the civil rights acts prove that progress is possible and that the state is not horrible. All lives matter is not the rhetoric of the one you see. We've simply said that extinction is bad because it would subject millions of people to death, which is the only important, which is the impact that it terminally outweighs.